Hey guys, welcome back. Today we have the Jan Snow X50 electric bicycle. It looks like a motorcycle with a picture, but it is in fact a bicycle. The e-bike company Jan Snow sent me this bicycle for a complete test and review. And in today's video, we're gonna find out just how good this e-bike really is. But before we put it to the test, let's do a quick unboxing and assembly. Whatever you do, don't forget the battery, which seems to be just floating freely in the bottom of the box. As with every electric bike that I've gotten over the last two years, this thing has tons of zip ties. And I used to save the zip ties, but I just have so many of them, it's just not worth the effort. I usually try not to break these bikes until after they're assembled. I just dropped it, but it came out okay. The front axle is a traditional quick release, so it has that thin three millimeter through axle. And then the rear axle is a solid bolt through axle. So. The front axle is designed for quick release of the wheel. The rear axle will require some hand tools if you need to remove that rear wheel. So one thing I can say about this bicycle is it does feel like one of those classic motorcycles. So the graphic on the side of the box does do a pretty good job of representing what this bicycle looks like. So now let's get the handlebars installed, get the rest of this thing set up so we can take it for a test ride. I didn't look in the box yet to see if there are any tools included, but to get the stem set up, you just need a standard four millimeter Allen key. The stem is conveniently rotated 180 degrees to the rear, mainly for safe shipping. Once I've got those generally aligned, I'll go ahead and torque them down. If you do have a torque wrench and you are planning to use a torque wrench, torque these down to about five Newton meters. Since I don't have a torque wrench today, I'm just gonna do hand tight plus a little. The stem on this bicycle is about the same as a regular bicycle stem. So if you feel like this is not long enough or you wanna replace it with something shorter, for example, that'll be pretty easy to do. All right, so I've got that stem pretty much lined up. Now I just gotta get the handlebars on. And there is some knurling in the center of the handlebars and that knurling will help me line up the center of the handlebars to make sure that I have them at least closely aligned to where I want them to be. I try to do this in kind of an alternating pattern to make sure that none of the bolts is excessively tight compared to the rest of them, or that none of the bolts are looser than the rest of them. Bicycle phone holder, 100 watt AC charging block. This means that this battery will take up to seven hours to charge using this block. LED headlight, and wait a second. So this bicycle is gonna have turn signals when it's fully equipped. I don't believe I've tested any e-bike before that comes with turn signals, so I'm curious to see how these work. There's just so much stuff in here. I'm not gonna take them out individually. I'm just gonna dump it out because we have lock, bandana, some bolts, pump, shipping sticker, another turn signal, and a small tool set. Now I wanna go ahead and get this headlight installed. This seat reminds me of those banana bikes from the 1950s. Something like the bikes you might see on Stranger Things. For this seat, there's these four 10 millimeter nuts on these threaded bolts that are already attached to the seat. Now it's time for the seat to go on. Since the seat has four 10 millimeter nuts on it, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that the bike powers up and operates before I bolt those nuts down. That way I don't have to waste about 20 minutes pulling that seat back off if something is not working. Woo! All right, it looks like it works. 
The front fender comes inside of a bag and inside of that bag is the nut and bolt that holds the front fender to the front forks, which is a little interesting because there's already a bolt in this uh, front fender bolt hole. So this bike came with some pretty standard pedals. In this case, your blue pedal or your left pedal is the left pedal, and then you also have one for the right. Be careful when you're installing the pedals because one of the threads is reversed compared to what you would normally do. Another easy way to install pedals is to simply get them started. Once you get them started, just back pedal until you can't back pedal anymore, and then from there, use the wrench to finish it up. Now I'll just make sure it's snug, but I don't want to overdo it because these pedals are not going to fall off. All right guys, so the bike is almost ready. It's probably 95% complete right now. What I want to do before I take it for a test ride is I want to add some air to the tires and then just go over it one more time to make sure I didn't miss anything. All right guys, so filling those tires up is a little bit of a workout. I could have used the air compressor here, but I wanted to test that pump out. That pump is for emergency use only. It took me about 100 pumps to get that thing to fill up that tire. And I don't have a tire pressure gauge with me, but if you do have one at your house, try to get about 20 PSI in those tires. And then if you feel like you want to go lower, go lower from there. But as fast as these electric bikes go, you may want to have a little higher pressure than you would on a fat tire bike because these are subjected to a higher load as you're going around curves and you don't want one of those tires to pop while you're moving fast. So off the bat, there are a few things I actually like about this electric bike versus some of the other e-bikes that I've tested recently. And the first thing is that the throttle and the rear brake are on the same side. And the reason that's important is if I have to pull the brake, which the brakes are not broken in yet, then I'm not gonna go over the front handlebars because I'm not gonna be compressing the front suspension by pulling the front brake. Some of the bikes I've tested recently do have the front brake and the throttle on the same side, and that's not something I wanna deal with. Something else I've noticed is this bike is set up in metric, so it has a max speed of 25 kilometers per hour on throttle assist as set up right now. 25 kilometers per hour is a little less than 20 miles per hour, and I almost think it's about 15. So just remember, for most places here in the US, a throttle assist can take you up to 20 miles per hour and I believe if this is limited to 15 miles per hour, then that's more set up for your European English uh, standard. In addition to that, the level of assist that you have does limit the level of throttle. And so right now I have it on level five, which is getting me up to that 25 kilometers per hour. But when I had it on level one, it was going around 10 kilometers per hour. So. Keep that in mind when you first get this bike and start riding it, you're gonna to wanna to pump that up to number five if you wanna take advantage of its maximum speed. The bike has mechanical disc brakes on the front and the rear. So this bike does have a Shimano seven speed shifter. It doesn't have any verbiage on it other than Shimano, so it's not an Altus shifter. It does shift normally, and with most of the electric bikes that I have tested, a seven-speed shifter is pretty much standard. This bike has a horn. It also has a left turn signal and a right turn signal. There's no cancel button, so when you're done turning, make sure you recenter that turn signal button. In addition to that, you can turn on the headlight by just depressing the headlight button. Pretty straightforward. Because this is an electric bicycle, I do like the half twist throttle here. The half twist throttle gives me the ability to hold onto the handlebars while also manipulating that throttle as necessary. I don't want to tear up the grass here, but I could probably do a little burnout. So another thing I recommend is if you do get a bike like this and you are going to build it on your own in your driveway, make sure that you go through and double check every nut and bolt. It is possible that some of the bolts throughout the bike may not be torqued to spec. 
and so you wouldn't want something to rattle loose while you're going down the road. The front shock feels like a spring-assisted shock. It doesn't have any control, so you don't have any damping and you don't have any rebound control. The back shock also appears to have no adjustability. So if you're a lighter rider, this might be too firm for you, and if you're a heavier rider, this might be too soft. Luckily for today, the battery came fully charged, or at least it shows fully charged on both the battery's indicator bar up here at the top, as well as on the battery bar on the display. Since I've been riding the bike, I have put just over one mile on it, going back and forth and riding through the yard here. So as I said before, I do appreciate that the throttle and the back brake are both on the right-hand side. In addition to that, you do have your shifter controls for your Shimano 7-speed shifter. And then over here on the left-hand side, you do have that light switch, that horn switch, turn signal rocker, and you also have your plus and minus for your pedal assist. Overall, it seems like a pretty fun bike to ride. I can either pedal or use the throttle. I am five foot nine and the pedals are just a little short for my legs and there is no adjustment for the seat height. So that's pretty much standard on bikes like this. The, the seat is a fixed height and the pedals are either perfect for you or they're absolutely wrong and there's nothing you can do about it. But in the long run, you're probably not even gonna be pedaling this bike unless of course you run out of battery power. All right guys, I've been riding this bike and you guys know I love electric bikes and this thing is fun, but I got a guy here and I wanna see if, uh, if it'll put a smile on his face. Carson, you wanna test it? You know how to ride a bicycle? Come on. Oh, you got a Harley, right? All right guys, I'm here with Carson and what I wanna do is see if this thing will put a smile on his face. Yeah, this is pretty neat. Is it nice? Yeah, I really like this. Let me get on the road here. Yeah, I'd say this is well worth the money. So that was your first test ride on an electric bike. Did you ride a bike before? Yes. Like a real bike? Yeah. Is this a little bit easier than a regular bike? Oh yeah. Lots of fun, right? <laughs> Lots of fun. Nice. Goes pretty fast too. It's neat, man. Is it neat? It is neat. All right, guys, I think we succeeded in putting a smile on Carson's face. Let me go see if I can figure out how to convert that to miles per hour and see if I can bump up that top speed a little bit. I don't have any literature on how to mess with the display, but I have gotten the bike to go up to 22 miles per hour on throttle assist, but now the speedometer is off. So whatever I did, I changed what the bike thinks the diameter of the wheel is, and I've gotten it to unlock its maximum throttle capability. So I'm okay with that because I'm pretty sure I'm not going much faster than 20 miles per hour right now. Before we go any further, let me park the bike and cover all of its specs. Okay guys, so today I'm gonna to do just a quick walk around, starting with this seven speed Shimano shifter. In addition to that, you do have your twist throttle. You have standard rubber grips. These are not locking grips, so they do twist a little bit if you need them to, which is perfect for setting up the grips how you want them. Moving over to the front of the bike, you do have a nice LED headlight. You also have left and right turn signals. Now these turn signals are not very bright in the day, but I'm sure they shine through at night. Your tires are some CST BFT. Essentially, these are some generic tires that are mounted properly. They are 20 inches by 4.0. So if you do need to replace these inner tubes, you can find those pretty easily on Amazon. The front fork does have the feel of a motorcycle fork. And on this portion of the fork, it has some foam, almost like you would get at a weight or a gym when you're uh, lifting weights. This e-bike does have a pretty standard bicycle stem, so if you need to replace this, you can use a standard stem from Amazon. Moving over to the left side of the cockpit, you do have your display. It has down and upshift buttons for your pedal assist. In addition to that, you do have your power button. With the bicycle on, your horn works, and it is pretty loud, although it does sound a little goofy. You do have your left signal and your right signal, and you do want to center that when you're not turning because it does not have an auto return or an auto cancel like some motorcycles have. Your light button is pretty simple. You just depress it once it's on, depress it again, it's off. Both brake levers do have a safety wire, so when you squeeze that lever, you see that little light illuminating on the dash. The little light will illuminate right here. That indicates that your motor will no longer get power. In protecting your seven speed shifter, you do have a little cage and I don't know if you can tell, but I did already test it at least once while trying to take some pictures and dropping the bike on this side. 
The bike does have pedals and it does have this shifter, although I really don't think you're gonna be using this unless it's an absolute emergency. The wiring on the frame is a little interesting because from the rear triangle back, it's all exposed wiring. But going into the front triangle and going through to the front of the bicycle, all the wiring runs through the top tube. Both the front and rear fenders are mounted to a single point on the frame, so they are susceptible to twisting. However, I haven't found that to be a problem in my short test ride. And you can just barely see in the light here that the right turn signal is illuminated and it's slowly pulsing this way. Your battery on this bike is a 14 amp hour, 48 volt battery. There is a little bit of clearance between the tire and the fender and you can adjust this a little bit if you need to. This electric bike does have that flat banana seat that has that cool look to it. And the frame is made up of shaped tubular steel sections. So this is not a monoform aluminum frame. Because of that, this bike probably is a little heavier than some of the competitors. But no matter how you slice it, this is an electric bike and electric bikes are always heavier than regular bikes. It feels like it might weigh about 80 pounds and with or without that steel frame, it's still gonna weigh a lot. So if you plan to use this bike in somewhere like an urban setting where you do have to carry it up flights of stairs and down flights of stairs keep that in mind you're not going to want to be lugging this up more than one or two flights of stairs overall this bike has been a blast to ride today and i'm going to leave it here with the gentleman that was test riding it earlier and as he's testing it if anything comes up i'll be sure to pin that in the first comment if you do have any questions about the bike leave them in the comments and i'll be sure to answer them as soon as possible thanks so much for watching be sure to subscribe and i'll see you on my next adventure